had a great opportunity to get to see Martha Stewart. I was just um, back from New York, and I want to share with you some really cool stuff. I was invited by the Aspire team, and uh, they are doing an incredible business tour. And the things that you learn from really successful people are just something that it's just it's a good thing to assimilate. You get to figure out, okay, where are you at? Uh, in comparing yourselves to them, not in comparing yourself in a successful way, but their mindset. What what more could you do differently? So I want to head to the the whiteboard in just a moment, and let's go over some of the things. And this will enable you to determine, uh, for those of you who are entrepreneurs or want to be entrepreneurs, at what level are you willing to play the game to have the kind of success that you truly desire? So I want to go over that. Let's switch cameras. Are we at the right camera with the right camera? All right. One of the things that I thought she said, and by the way, this woman is over 80 years old. And when you listen to her, you would think she just got started in business. She's so excited. So one of the things that she is really, really and was excited about is technology. Technology. You know how many people don't like technology and walk away from it? She's talking about, okay, I want to go ahead and do stuff with AI. I'm so excited, <clears throat> excuse me, about AI. So she's working on uh, an AI program to get her voice just the way it is, and she's going to be using it in her uh, websites and whatnot. But she is so excited about it. And when you hear her talk about it, it's not like, yeah, you know, I'm excited about working with AI, but she's she's almost giddy about it. Ultimately, she is on top of the times. Many people today are not. There are people that I know that are in their 40s and 50s. They have hardly any idea what AI is. They're not even using AI. And this woman is in her 80s and she's excited about it. Another thing, she is willing to work and put in the time. She is a billionaire and she is still putting in the time. She talked about how she doesn't go out to lunch. <clears throat> it's a waste of time. I, I put a video out not too long ago. You may have seen it and you can search for it somewhere on YouTube. It's no lunch for 20 years. So for 20 years, I would not go out to lunch. I'd have people invite me all the time. Hey, you want to go out to lunch? Can, can I, <clears throat> excuse me, can I spend, you know, an hour with you? Let me take you out to lunch. And it's not just an hour for lunch. I have to cut and carve my schedule out. I then have to get there. I then have to come back. In fact, somebody just recently, hey, you know, you want to have lunch? 99.99 .99 times out of 100, it is no. Why? Because I have to put the work in. So technology, she's willing to put the work in. And another thing she does is she does a lot of things herself. What do I mean by that? She talked about when she would have like sheets manufactured and made for her to put onto her product line. One of the things that she would do is after the sheets were delivered to her, she personally would go down to her basement and put them in the washing machine and she would wash them. She's doing it herself. She wanted to see how much shrinkage there was, was there any shrinkage, and she would go through everything on the, you know, the sheets and make sure it's just right. Now, she could pay somebody to do that, but she is very much in touch with her products. She is in touch with her products. She has her thumb on the pulse. Let me give you an example of somebody in just a moment who did not have their thumb on the pulse, who was making millions of dollars and lost it all. But before I get to that, one of the things that I want to share with you in looking at all of this is that she is so wrapped up as an entrepreneur. <clears throat> a lot of people, they have a business, but they're not obsessed with it. They're not consumed by it. And this is what it takes. Of all the billionaire mentors and all the billionaires that I've met and people who are not billionaires but are very, very successful, 
being an entrepreneur is a way of life. In fact, for me, like if I date somebody who's not an entrepreneur, I'm going to tell you most likely it's going to be a problem because they don't understand the mindset of an entrepreneur. By that, here's what I mean. If a person is a mother, when are they a mother? Are they a mother only Monday through Friday or only in the evenings or only at nighttime, bedtime or only in the morning? No, they are a mother or father 24 seven. Entrepreneurs are the same way. I'm not an entrepreneur nine to five, Monday through Friday. I'm an entrepreneur 24 seven. It is me, it is my way of life. And if I have somebody in my life that I want to you know, date or wants to see me or spend time with me and they don't get that, that doesn't mean I don't make them a priority, but it is consumed in my life. It's weaved into everything that I do, everywhere that I go. So you must understand that. And maybe one of the reasons that you're not having the success that you would like is because you're not willing to pay the price. Well, but Gary, I've got kids and Gary, I've got this. Well, then you wake up at four o'clock in the morning. I've got a lot of challenges. I wake up at four o'clock in the morning. You can either take some stuff off your plate and if you're not able to take your kids and put them on eBay and sell them, it's probably illegal. <laughs> you're not going to do that. So you're going to have to figure something out. You're going to have to wake up earlier. You're going to have to do something differently. So what I do is I make a bigger plate. And that's why you typically will see, if you ever watch me or follow me on you know, stories or something like that, you will see that I wake up very early because I've made my plate bigger so I can do more to accomplish more. So this is a way of life. This is a lifestyle. Now let's go back to the person who, unlike Martha, did not have their thumb on the pulse. And his name is a famous Amos. You've heard of him before. In fact, legally, he cannot even use the words famous Amos because it's no longer his to use. The story goes similar to the point or something like this where he became very successful. He decided he'd move to Hawaii, kind of chill out a little bit, leave a lot of decisions and a lot of responsibility to the people that work for him. But slowly things started to deteriorate because he took his thumb off the pulse. My billionaire mentor, one thing that I learned from him, his thumb is always on the pulse. Every television commercial that goes out, every brochure that goes out, he looks at every single little thing because he wants his thumb on the pulse. The moment he gets disengaged, things will go downhill. Famous Amos did that so much so that the company lost so much money, he had to sell it and the company now that owns that company also owns the right to the words Famous Amos. Interesting. So that is why it's so important to be in touch with your products and your customers. This woman is consumed and she cares about her image, her products, and because of that, she puts all the time in. I was also intrigued. She, you know, she has a huge 150-acre farm. I think it's in Connecticut or New Jersey, somewhere up there. And she was talking to Andrew, who is one of the owners of Aspire. And he had just recently bought a farm. So she was asking him about, you know, what kind of tractor do you have? This woman knows all about Kubota tractor. She's got a Kubota. She's got um, a John Deere. And she says, do you have the 95 horsepower John Deere? And she's talking about it like she knows everything about it because she does. So this woman is so ingrained into what she's doing. It's become a way of life. So the lesson for you, if you want to be an entrepreneur, this is not a hobby. Now, if you want to make it a hobby, you're going to get paid a hobbyist's wages, which is most likely nothing, or you're going to be working from paycheck to paycheck. But if you're truly committed, truly excited about serving people, truly excited about your products and services, you truly care about your customers, I cannot tell you how many people I do business with that really don't care enough about their image and their customers and you can tell when you work with them, especially when things don't go right and you have a problem with their product or service. All right, so hopefully I've shared with you something that you'll appreciate and learn from, or as a strong reminder, comment below which one of these things make sense to you, which one of these things maybe you're all about, you're really into, maybe one of these are the weaknesses, maybe you don't put in enough work or you don't put in enough time, you're gonna pay a price if you don't. Do you have your thumb on the pulse? Every time I think about when I get to a certain level of success, okay, I'm gonna back off a little bit. And then every time I do that, I start seeing things, not that I'm a control freak, 
but I do need my thumb on the pulse because people are not going to do things the way maybe they should because they also have distractions just like you do and just like I do. And I hope you've enjoyed this. I'd love to have you subscribe to this channel if you already haven't. Love to see your comments below. I try to reply to as many of them as possible. I'm out of here between now and the next time we get the chat. You know what to do. And if you don't, you do now. Don't let others rent space in your head. Have an awesome day and we'll see you to the next video. Uh.